Welcome everyone to this uh, presentation on making tax digital. Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Neil De Costa, and I'm a senior tax lecturer at Kaplan. And uh, Kaplan is a premier training organisation in the UK. Uh, we offer training for all kinds of uh, finance, uh, accountancy, and tax qualifications. So uh, many people have heard about making tax digital. Okay making tax digital. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to share some uh, thoughts with you on making tax digital. So this is quite a revolutionary process and um, it's a major shake-up to the tax system in the UK. So um, as I'm sure many of you are aware, um, we already have a single government gateway. So um, with regard to the single government gateway, this was introduced back in 2015. And with the single government, uh, government gateway, it allows individuals to manage their personal tax online. So this has been in place since 2015. And what uh, HMRC have found is this has been a great success. Okay, so this has been a great success. So the way that uh, the government gateway works is you apply for a government gateway user ID, as all of you are aware, and um, HMRC issue um, issue you with a number, and that becomes your unique number for accessing HMRC's online personal tax services. So uh, you just uh, set up a, a user ID, um, um, and you put in your password, and once you log in, uh, you then have to enter your um, your uh, your details and all your personal tax all your income tax and so on is monitored online and you can access it whenever you want uh, from anywhere around the world they also have a dual system authentic authentication process whereby um, they send you a text uh, message uh, on your phone and they give you a code and you you enter the code in so, so this has been very successful and what HMRC have now decided to do is by introducing Making Tax Digital, they want to make it easier for individuals and, and businesses to get their tax right and keep on top of their tax affairs. So they now are going to extend this, uh, this home page that all of you are aware of uh, to the other taxes. And uh, what they've decided to do is to start off with VAT. Okay. So they're going to start off with VAT. So um, with regard to making tax digital for VAT, uh, since 2019, VAT registered businesses uh, with a turnover of more than 85,000 have been required to keep digital records and submit digital tax, uh, tax returns. So with regard to businesses, uh, who have a turnover of less than 85,000, they will have to use Making Tax Digital from April 2022. So currently, uh, VAT registered businesses, as you know, the VAT threshold is whereby you have taxable supplies of at least 85,000 in a 12 month period. So uh, if the business is VAT registered, they are already using Making Tax Digital. But what HMRC have now said is from April 2022, all businesses, regardless um, um, of uh, their, turn their turnover, will have to use uh, Making Tax Digital. And uh, businesses uh, will have to maintain digital records, and this includes all the current VAT supporting documentation, such as the business name, uh, the, uh, the address, the place of business, your VAT registration number, the type of supply, because we could have different types of supplies. So there are three main uh, types of supplies. As you know, they're the standard rated supplies where you have to charge VAT at 20%. We then have um, zero rated supplies. Uh, the most important is exports. So if you export goods outside the UK, even though these are taxable supplies, and you can still claim back the input VAT on your UK purchases, you don't have to charge output VAT on these zero rated sales. And the last supplies we have are exempt supplies. 
and with regard to exempt supplies this is where you sell uh, supplies such as finance or insurance and if you sell exempt supplies you cannot claim back input VAT on your purchases so you have to tell HMRC what type of supply you're making you also have to disclose the tax point the tax point is the date the supply is treated as be as taking place for VAT purposes and usually with the tax point in terms of goods this is uh, the date of delivery of the goods or the date of completion for services but if you receive a deposit uh, before uh, you deliver the goods then obviously the deposit date uh, can become the tax point alternatively if you issue a VAT invoice within 14 days of delivering the goods we then use the invoice date as the tax point so this is why the tax point is very important as well as the rate of VAT charged and businesses can claim back VAT on all their expenses on all their business expenses so you do need to keep uh, digital records of all these expenses as well in addition to that uh, businesses do claim back VAT on assets like machinery uh, computers and furniture so digital records of assets bought also need to be maintained So in terms of uh, digital records, make sure uh, it's important for the business to have a valid VAT invoice, okay? So it should have an invoice number, and then what we've got there is um, the, the business's name and address. Um, we've also got the, the supplier's VAT registration number, the customer name, the customer name, um, and details. Um, we should then have a, as I said, unique invoice number, uh, we should also have the date and timing of the supply of goods and services, um, the date of the invoice, and then we should have a description as to what, uh, what supplies are being made. Okay, Like you can see here with regard to the unit price, that should be on there, the price per item and the VAT rate. And then what you have is you then have a subtotal and the subtotal should exclude VAT. So the subtotal excludes VAT, and then what we do is we show the VAT separately on the invoice and the total amount due. So um, we need digital records of all this documentation. So in terms of uh, uh, making tax digital for VAT, most businesses prepare VAT returns quarterly. And when you prepare your returns quarterly, uh, you might have to adjust for issues such as errors or mistakes. Uh, discovered in previous returns so if you're going to make um, an, an adjustment for an error or a mistake then you do need to keep a digital records of these as well uh, in addition to this if we've got supplies made outside the UK so exports and imports we might have reverse charge transactions and with regard to these reverse charge transactions, once again, we have to maintain digital records. So um, HMRC can trace all, um, uh, all the origination of these uh, reverse charge transactions. Uh, HMRC also have special schemes for small businesses. For example, we have the flat rate scheme. And with, reg with, with regard to the flat rate scheme, businesses are allowed to join the flat rate scheme if they have a turnover currently of not more than 150,000. And the good news about the flat rate scheme is it offers a simplified method of accounting for VAT. So here, rather than accounting for VAT on each of your sales invoices, you account for VAT by taking your gross takings and multiplying by, by a fixed percentage based on uh, based on what type of business we have. So for example, an off license would have a different percentage as opposed to a news agent or a restaurant for that matter. So um, here you would have to maintain your daily gross takings. So if you are part of any special scheme, such as the retail scheme or the flat scheme, then you do need to maintain digital records of, um, of the different uh, methodologies that you've used to compute VAT. And HMRC will, will check this. Now, in terms of ma uh, making tax digital for VAT, 
HMRC do not provide us with the software for submitting our digital VAT returns. So what businesses have to do is they initially use spreadsheets to summarize the VAT transactions and calculate the VAT payable. What the business then needs is the business then needs bridging software to convert the records into the correct submission format. And uh, the bridging software is available from uh, third party uh, vendors such as Xero, QuickBooks, Sage, Zoho and FreshBooks. Okay, so these are a couple of um, companies that provide this digital software. And what this um, bridging software does is it pulls the information from the spreadsheets um, and it then uh, helps you submit this um, online um, VAT return. And in terms of all this documentation, you are obliged to keep it for at least six years. Um, the government uh, estimated that costs to small businesses would be um, would cost uh, seventy pounds a year for for four years or two hundred and eighty pounds. But the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales estimate the cost will be at least one thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. So uh, here I've pulled up. Um, um, the interface of a very popular uh, bridging software manufacturer who, that, that's zero and uh, zero um, so, so that's the interface there and what you can see with many of the uh, these companies they offer uh, monthly monthly payment plan so uh, so once you join the scheme like for example with zero it is possible their plans start from just 10 pounds per month so um, HMRC do not provide the required software and you would need to acquire the software from a third party like Xero. Now the next step uh, in terms of making tax digital is HMRC are then going to introduce making tax digital for sole traders. Okay, so for sole traders, so for people who are self-employed and people who are self-employed will have to use making tax digital from April 2023. Uh, so they'll have to also uh, keep their records digitally and submit income tax updates to HMRC. And this will now move self-employed uh, tax to more of a real-time system, uh, you know, which is whereby HMRC can monitor the tax in real time. And this lets uh, the sole trader see how much income tax they owe as they go by. So what they can then do is they can then budget accordingly for this tax liability. Once the digital records have been submitted for the entire year, the final report for the counting period is computed. And at that point, the sole trader can claim capital allowances. So capital allowances are tax depreciation uh, that we can claim on things like um, furniture, computers, and so on. So, uh, you know, we can claim an annual investment allowance, or perhaps we can claim a writing down allowance. And in fact, currently we know um, for companies, uh, they're actually enhanced allowances available. In addition to this, if the sole trade has made a loss, so with the current economic conditions, um, many businesses shut down over the pandemic, they might have generated losses, trading losses. What they can then do is they can now make uh, a loss relief claim. For example, you can take your trading loss and offset it against the total income of the current year. You can also offset it against the total income of the previous year. And what you can then do is generate uh, a tax refund. Alternatively, if you, if you don't have enough income to use up the loss, you can always carry it forward against future available trading profits from the same trade. So th at this point, you can then make your loss claim. Now, what about landlords? What about landlords? Well, HMRC plan on introducing uh, making tax digital for landlords as well. So in terms of landlords, uh, landlords with a rental income of more than £10,000 and this will obviously include most landlords because uh, £10,000 um, is just £1,000 um, a month. Okay, So they will also be required to use Making Tax Digital from April 2023. 
and they'll also have to keep their records digitally and submit income tax updates to HMRC. And once again, the plan here, the reason why HMRC have done this is to move landlords to a real-time system, which lets them see how much income tax they owe um, as they go through the tax year. Now, in terms of making tax um, digital, HMRC have introduced a pilot system for sole traders and landlords in order to get them used to this. So um, if we have a sole trader, for example, we've got this lady here who's, uh, you know, she's got her own uh, arts and crafts business. Um, sole traders and landlords um, have the option to join the digital uh, returns pilot system now. And uh, so since 2019, as long as you have a turnover of more than 85,000, uh, you are required uh, to keep digital records and submit digital VAT returns, okay? But, uh, but now um, what's going to happen is um, sole traders and landlords also have to do the same thing. So in conclusion then, making tax digital is a major shake up to the tax system and we'll all have to uh, ac you know, customize ourselves to these digital records. So instead of using bits of paper, we all have to have digital records now. And eventually the plan is, uh, uh, paper records will not meet the legal requirements. So eventually we'll all have to have uh, these digital records. Uh, if you've enjoyed the presentation, um, you might be interested to know that I've written a book called Advanced Tax Condensed, and this has all the essential tax technical knowledge. Uh, so if you're preparing for a tax exam, uh, this could be a very useful resource to you. It consists of about 150 full color pages with multiple images and Neil's top tips. Okay, And if you're interested in purchasing this, you can purchase this from my website, neildacosta.co.uk. And if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I, I do do lots of useful tax posts um, um, and updates to keep all of you informed of the latest developments uh, in the tax world. So it's been a pleasure meeting you. Uh, so I'm Neil DaCosta from Kaplan. I hope you've enjoyed this little presentation and um, make sure everyone of you is ready for making tax digital. All the best.